Um, maybe you think like humans don't have that problem, that humans aren't that reliable. So can we make something that's extremely reliable, but not subject to these problems? Here's the general plan for the talk. Uh, I'll first give you an example, uh, an intuitive example, of how this sort of thing can be a problem. Um, then I'll, I'll uh, talk, talk about the formal toy model of this sort of problem. Uh, and finally, um, I'll give some, some partial solutions in the context of this toy problem, toy problem and think about what they can tell us about uh, this general problem. So, uh, for the intuitive problem called the procrastination paradox, imagine an AI uh, in a deterministic world, which is well known, which has discrete time steps. And in each time step, the AI chooses whether to press a certain button. Uh, if it presses the button in the first round, it gets utility a half. Uh, if it presses in the second round for the first time, it gets two thirds. If it presses in the third round, it gets three fourths. And so, the later, the better. But if it never presses the button, it doesn't get anything. So there's no optimal strategy here, but we can certainly do better than, than getting no points at all. Um, and so we'll consider an AGI, which is programmed to press this button immediately, until it finds some sort of good argument that the button will get pressed later. And for the moment, we'll leave uh, unspecified what good argument means, uh, in order to be like general. Um, so, uh, suppose that the AGI reasons like this. If I don't press the button right now, then in the next step, I'm either going to press the button or not. And if I do, the button gets pressed. Good. I've avoided not getting any points. If I don't press the button in the next point, I certainly must have found a good argument that the button gets pressed at some later time, so the button gets pressed. Good. Either way, the button gets pressed. Um, so, the AGI can always find this good argument that the button will get pressed at some later time, and then it never actually gets around to pressing the button. So, uh, if we want to have a reliable way of doing this sort of self-expression preferential reasoning, reasoning about uh, modification of yourself, you must find a way to avoid this paradox and avoid other problems like this. So, let's think about what went wrong and how we can fix it. So, uh, if you look at this, uh, this problem, you may notice that um, uh, it would go away if we had only a finite time horizon, if we like, needed to press the button after a finite time, or, or we also get nothing. Um, and it would also go away if we had temporal discounting, so rewards in every time step and uh, some discount factors. Um, and so the question is, uh, if we just you know, introduce temporal discounting, do we fix all these problems? Do we then, like, uh, can, can we then use negative reasoning and everything goes well? Um, and uh, in our time model, the answer is uh, the time model that I'm about to introduce uh, to like, formally analyze this problem. The answer is no, this is not enough by itself. Um, we're still going to get into more technical problems of self-reference, like related to rules and completeness theorems. But um, we can fix these problems, um, in, like we have partial solutions in the context of our time model. Um, and these solutions work, we can apply them if we have finite horizons, or if we have time discounting. So we aren't going to be able to treat this original problem that way. Um, with these partial solutions, uh, but, uh, but if we have those things, then uh, we'll be able to solve the problem. Um, and so, going from the from this time model to like the question, what tells what does this tell tell us about general reasoning? Uh, it suggests that um, uh, we can uh, avoid these problems uh, somehow if we are uh, willing to to introduce finite horizons or time discounting. So let me go on to like making a formal model for, for analyzing this problem. So far, I've like tried to give an intuition uh, in, in, in verbal terms uh, that hopefully will apply to a lot of different kinds of reasoning. Um, and now I'll, I'll, I'll like give a formal model that, that isn't as general, but that we can analyze. So for this formal toy model, um, I'll think about an AGI that uses formal logic and proof search. Uh, and we don't actually think that this is how AGI is actually going to work. That's not the point. Um, 
In fact, we think that this problem um, is much more general and doesn't just apply to, to, apply to logic, because um, what I've assumed is just pretty intuitive, naive reasoning. Um, and uh, the reason that we, we use formal logic is just so that we can analyze what's going on here, that we can prove uh, theorems about it. But then the question is, what, does, uh, what do these theorems teach us actually about the general problem, and can we like, apply those lessons uh, uh, and figure out if we have some general way of reasoning about self-modifications, uh, how can we make sure that, that this isn't subject to any, any problems of this sort? So, here's the formal setup. Um, let's write P of n for the button is pressed at the nth time step, and I'll make that formal at the end of this slide. And then we'll define a computable function f of n. f of n searches for proofs in piano arithmetic, which are bounded by a certain length, um, that the button gets pressed later, after the nth time step. And if so, then it decides not to press the button at the nth, nth time step. So f of n returns 0 if, uh, if a proof of this, uh, of this form is found. If a proof is found that the button gets pressed later, it returns 0 to signify that it's not pressed in that round. Um, and if it doesn't find a proof like this, then it returns 1, which we interpret as uh, the button is pressed in the nth time step. And um, this P of n, the button is pressed in the nth time step, is then simply defined as uh, uh, saying that f of n returns 1, uh, which means that f of n is like a self-referential definition, because uh, it refers to P of n, which again refers to f of n, uh, but you can do that uh, by a clean second recursion theorem, which means that a computable function can basically refer to its own source code. Uh, I don't have time to go into the details, but it's like, it's like uh, uh, a standard trick. So, um, and now I'm going to like, show you that the same kind of reasoning, uh, well actually, I'm going to see whether the same kind of reasoning applies to, to this case, and if not, uh, where it goes wrong. Um, what prevents it from going through. So if we, if we like our f of n, we think of ourselves as the AI in the nth time step, and we think about how does it reason about the AI in the next time step, about f of n plus 1. So first it thinks either the button will be pressed or not. So p of n plus 1 or not p of n plus 1. That's just uh, tertium and doubter. Um, if the button is, uh, is not pressed in the next time step, well, we can look at f of n plus 1 and see that the only way in which it would return 0 is if it has found a proof that the button will be pressed later. And so at the bottom of the slide, I have this notation. So this box sub pa of phi means that phi is provable in pa. So up there, we, we can like look at f of n plus 1 and show that uh, if it doesn't return 1, um, then uh, it has found a proof, so there is a proof that there is a k greater than n plus 1 uh, satisfying p of k. And now comes the step which uh, does it work. Um, if in order to, for the original reasoning to go through, we would now need to go from this, uh, there is a proof that um, the button will be pressed at a later time to uh, the button will actually be pressed at a later time, which seems pretty natural. Uh, but the question is, can p a prove this? So let's suppose that it can, and we can go on. So um, we have uh, p of n plus 1 or not p of n plus 1. If not p of n plus 1, then there's proof of this. If there's proof of this, then this is true. So in summary, either uh, the button gets pressed in the next time step, or it gets pressed at some later time. In other words, the button gets pressed at some time step greater than n, either way. And uh, so f of n finds that proof in less than this, this humongous bound. Um, and so it has found a proof. By, by its definition, it returns 0. And that's the case for all n. So the button never actually gets pressed. In each round, it finds a proof that the button gets pressed later, but it never actually gets pressed, which means that the a would have proven something false. But we believe that the a only proves true things. So how can that be? Well, um, if the A isn't able to, to do this inference that I mark with a question mark, and that's in fact the case, you can prove in the Mela Frankel set theory that um, piano arithmetic doesn't prove this inference. So um, that's where this proof fails in our time model based on formal logic. 
So what does this tell us about the general case? Um, how, what does this tell us about how to avoid this problem in general? Can we generalize this idea uh, and say that in general, AGIs shouldn't be able to do this sort of inference? Well, let's think about why we think that our AGI will work correctly. So we've come up with this, uh, some sort of uh, extremely reliable reasoning, and we know that we'll only take an action if it's gone through this extremely reliable reasoning and concluded that this action is safe in some sense. So we reason, well, it will only take actions it has, it has shown to be safe, um, and therefore any actions that it will take are actually safe. Um, and so if we have a self-modifying AI, well, like, how is it going to reason that its successor is also safe, that it's okay to make a self-modification, if it can't do the same thing that we do to convince ourselves that the original AI is safe? So, um, we need something like this inference that says, well, if, like, I build a successor and that successor reasons that something is a safe action, then that's actually a safe action if we want the AI to be able to do the same reasoning that we can do. And now, in the context of this logical time model, we run into the problem that by Adele, uh, Griddle's theorem, by Lipp's theorem, uh, which is a variation, um, this, this turns out to be inconsistent. Um, so, uh, a theory can't know that itself is consistent, um, and this would say that, like, uh, if T proves a falsehood, then a falsehood is true, so T doesn't prove a falsehood. So this is inconsistent with Griddle's uh, theorem, whether we have like finite time horizons or not, that doesn't enter into it. If you have this, then you can like prove that everything is safe. Um, we do have some partial solutions to this problem in the context of our time model. Of course, we need to like change our problem slightly, um, but uh, we, we have some things that we can do if we change our problem slightly that make things work in the context of this time model. First of these is, uh, we can have a sequence of theories such that each theory proves this thing about the previous theory. So, um, if we have, like, if we build an AI, AI using T7, then that AI can self-modify into a different version that uses T6, um, and then it can reason, well, everything that this, this successor uh, does, it has proven that that thing is safe, and it's proven that in the theory T6. And therefore, since I'm using T7, I know that it's actually a safe thing. But this stops working after a finite number of time steps, which is fine if we have finite time horizons. So we can see from the beginning, this is why we have finite time horizons. This is what we can use. But it's still fairly unsatisfactory, I would say. So um, a different and more complicated thing to prove uh, for details, see the paper, I'm about to run out of time. Um, uh, we, have, uh, we can have a sequence of theories such, such that each theory actually proves this about the next theory, but only for restricted classes of, of um, uh, formulas, phi, phi, ones, uh, phi 1 formulas, which have a universal quantifier and then something that's checkable by a primitive recursive function. Um, and with this infinite sequence which goes forward, each, each theory can prove this about the next theory, you can actually have an AGI that rewrites it uh, an infinite number of times. Um, a problem with this is that the AI doesn't know that it can rewrite itself an infinite number of times, which is a little odd, but I have, don't have time to discuss this in detail. That's one reason why this isn't perfectly satisfactory. But we show in the paper that with this rule, with pi-1 sentences, uh, you can't get into the procrastination paradox from the beginning of the talk, but um, you can handle temporal discounting. Um, and so the question is, like, does this tell us something about uh, formal logic, uh, beyond formal logic? Um, I, I don't really have uh, any big conclusions here, but I think that it's, uh, this suggests that um, the, these kinds of, uh, like, you, you need to work, you need to do work uh, to figure out how can you avoid these sorts of problems. You need to actually um, make sure that your highly reliable thing avoids those problems, but you can do so um, at least if you use finite time horizons or temporal discounting, and maybe um, this can teach us how to go beyond that. So conclusions. Um, I gave an intuitive paradox. I, uh, I showed how to analyze this with a time model based on logic. 
Um, in the paper, we give detailed proofs, uh, and we show how to extend this to actual agents which uh, act in the world, and uh, which are uh, space time embedded, which I very much care about, but don't have time to go into here. Um, and so in conclusion, um, I think that extremely reliable self-referential reasoning is possible, but it's not trivial. Thank you for listening.